So first and foremost, talk about my first knife, which is this one right here. Um, this is the Openel Carbon Steel, and it's the number seven. Uh, it's made of beech wood, and of course, like I mentioned, the blade is carbon steel. Uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a carbon steel blade or if I wanted to do um, a stainless steel. And I opted to get both. This one I got locally uh, because it was available, and this is the number seven. And then I also recently got, it's still in the box, but I thought I'd show that as well. I got this off of Amazon. This is a number eight, and this is done in olive wood. So I'll open that up, just a little off camera here, and I'll show you the difference in size and the difference in wood. Here we go. So this is the unit. Move that down. And it's done in a stainless steel blade, and it's done in olive wood. And this would be the number eight, which is always labeled there on the rim. Now on this little locking mechanism, it's a really interesting knife. So if they didn't have this locking mechanism, I'm just gonna turn this back to center. This one's a bit tight. Then it would just be up and down. And originally the knives from Openel were like that. They were just a nice piece of wood. You would open up the blade. And notice I'm doing this with two hands because this one's quite stiff. Um, this would be it. The blade would stay open. When you're pushing and applying pressure on it, obviously it wouldn't go back down but there would be a chance that it could end up opening up in your pocket. And so I'm assuming uh, just <laughs> with that in mind, in I believe around World War II, Opinel uh, uh, invented this little lock ring and this allows you to turn the ring right there as I just did, which will lock the blade from opening. Uh, and if you have it opened, it will then lock the blade from closing. And I've seen a lot of videos out there where people put in quite a lot of pressure downwards on this to try to force that. And this does a really good job. This locking, locking does a really good job. So here we can say the blade of the olive wood. It says inox, which I believe in French is translated to like not rustable, inoxidable. Um, I may be wrong, so excuse my French if I am wrong. Uh, it is a nice, uh, nice sh somewhat shiny blade. I've heard a few things about the, the difference between the blades. So I'm gonna leave this open um, with the olive wood and I'll open up the number seven. Besides the size, that's why I wasn't sure which blade to go with and or I wasn't sure which steel to go with. And then this is the number seven. This one is the number eight. Um, this is a standard model here. This is um, uh, beech wood, like I said, this is olive wood. The beech wood comes quite standard with the base models and these are not, these are quite reasonable. This one particular one, I believe, uh, is about $12 and maybe less on some stores, cost me about $12 plus tax. This one was closer to 20. Um, because the carbon steel requires a little bit more uh, maintenance, some people aren't really fancy to it. Uh, the stainless steel doesn't require, it won't rust, whereas the carbon steel could potentially rust. So there are a lot of YouTubers that will put some form of acid on the blade to force a patina. And if you don't do that, as long as you like make sure that it's not in a moist setting, it's, it's staying dry, then over time it will develop its own patina, which can be really nice. The other really nice thing about carbon steel, and I watched another YouTube video, and if I remember the name, I'll put it up in a little uh, box at the top here, but they were talking about how they like their the, the flat edge at the back. And I'm gonna close the knife so I can show you. With the knife closed and locked, there's this flat edge here, and you could use that, let me just make sure it's in focus. You could use that against a striking pad um, of some sorts, a flint per se, to start a fire. Whereas a stainless steel, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that can be really nice uh, if you were taking this out camping. I also, if I'm honest with you for EDC, I've had these for about a week now, both of them. I've carried the carbon, I got this one first, uh, so this one less than a week, but, but for the most part, a week for both. I've carried this one for a few days in my pocket and I've carried the number eight. Um, this number seven fits perfectly in my pocket. It disappears, I don't notice it. I've used it to go down and open up some parcels that have arrived. I've uh, taken it with me to open up other forms. I've had to cut some other things randomly and this has been great. I have no problems with it. Like I said, it's super lightweight, disappears in the pocket. Now the number eight, though I think the number eight fits my hand a little bit better. Um, it's just, it's almost the perfect size for the hand. Um, and the blade length is really nice with it. It's because they obviously take it and scale it up, the wood is quite, the circumference of the wood is quite a lot bigger. And this means that there's a bulge in the pocket. So I don't I don't like this much as much in my pocket as I do like the, um, the uh, number seven. 
So you can see in my pocket, I don't have these technically together in my pocket. I may have it with my uh, lip chap. There's some burp bees. That's about half the size. So comparing it with the number eight, then I can take the number eight out now. I'll take this one out, replace it. You can see that it is much taller, right? But it's more the circumference. I don't know if I can put these on top, but the circumference of the knife is bigger. Now, between the steels, I'm really fancying the carbon steel. I like things that patina. I like the fact that it has a few other purposes that you could use it for, especially for EDC and for camping uh, reasons. Um, and I think I like the fact that the number seven is a little easier to carry. Carry. I wish that the carbon steel was offered with different woods. That's my wish. I really like this olive wood. I like the walnut. I, there, there's lots of different wood options you can choose, but carbon steel is only offered, from my understanding right now on OpenL, it's only offered on the beech wood and it's a standard blade, which means it is the base model. And then of course these things can go up as high as a few hundred dollars, depending on the, not, not necessarily the type of stainless steel, but whether it's polished and the type of wood. You can get wood all the way from Africa, olive wood from the Mediterranean. You can get oak, dark oak, lots of things. You can even get a, a blade that's black, like a black stainless steel blade. So those are those knives. Uh, my first impression is I like them. I think these things are great. Like I said, really lightweight, both of them. Obviously the heavier models will go up. The wood may change depending if you will go with a stainless steel and you just try, decide to change the wood. The wood may be a little denser than other woods, but both of these woods are quite light. They fit really nice in the hands. I like the locking mechanism. When it's locked, the blade's not gonna go anywhere. I will say that the carbon steel uh, came out of the box super sharp and it's, it's still ridiculously sharp and the stainless steel not so much and I've heard other viewers talk about that as well. Uh, like I said, these are very reasonable priced. Uh, any of these would be fine. I'm, I've, I've heard lots of viewers that have had a stainless steel for years and then just decided hobby-wise to go to carbon. I think I'm most likely gonna stick with this more as an EDC. I may or might not keep this or may or just put it in my camping kit or may even give it uh, to a friend as a gift because they're quite reasonable. If you have any questions about OpenL knives, I'm gonna put some links for both of these in the descriptions below. Uh, both of those links are, are, are where I, I purchased the knives. So you can follow those. Um, I'll, put some, I'll put a link for the actual website um, of OpenL so you can look through. The other knife I'd like to get is the gardener's knife, which has a nice uh, a rounding handle on it. But um, uh, the one thing that I'm, I would like to see it again is I'd like to see if it, if it eventually came with a carbon blade. So I'm gonna show you in the package that it first came with. This says Boy Scouts of Canada. And it, it looks like this is like a veg tan leather because it's slowly fading. Um, I've used it for these last couple uh, years camping and uh, it's been great, but it was a little whiter uh, prior to me using it. Um, and if I take it out of its sheath and, and just move that to the side, this is the knife here. So it, it came with this original string. There it says Boy Scouts of Canada, if that if that is end up, ends up focusing. It's got some, um, brass I believe on the sides here some brass rivets um, looks like it's stainless steel you can see some patina on the knife and a nice hole it is quite heavy especially after carrying the open L knives as far as the knife goes we've got a knife section this is going to be a longer knife than the open L and I'll try to lower that down I don't know much about knives to talk about like the belly and all that or the blade uh, or the or where the edges is. I'm just I'm new to all of this thumb things. I was just doing some research to get a knife that would be to replace this for weight reasons, but also to replace this because it's not holding an edge very well. You can see it's stainless steel made in China. Um, so I don't know if that's talking about the quality of this. Like I said, it's a Boy Scout blade. It does lock. The locking mechanism is down here. You can push on the locking mechanism and then it folds back in. And it also has a saw. So I'll show you that. So it's a little stiffer to get out. There's your saw, bottle opener, and a flathead screwdriver in the end. I have used the saw when I was Boy Scouting to do a couple uh, fires and to chop down some specific kind of wood. Uh, and again, it locks as well, so you push would have to push the lock, and then you could fold it back in. And that's it. Uh, it comes with a nice sheath. There it is. In comparison to size to the open L's, um, we can just put them on the ends there. And you can see this is the biggest knife here. That's my knife collection. I wish I wouldn't have got these if this would have held an edge, to be honest with you, uh, just because of the history. I also have my grandpa's knife somewhere. It's a foldable knife, like a Swiss Army knife. If I find it, I'll, 
I'll do another video. But if anybody out there knows information on this type, if this was mass produced or knows anything about the type of knife it is, um, I'd love, like, let, let me know in the comments below um, some information or, or put, put uh, send this video to someone specific and we can get in touch. Just because I really like the knife and I'd like to learn more about it and potentially I'd like to keep this for, for a long time. In the meantime, I'm most likely gonna keep the seven. I find that easier in the pocket and I really like the carbon blade. There's nothing wrong with the stainless steel blade. It's just that it requires uh, obviously a bit more work here to sharpen it. I really like the wood um, and I wanted to check out a number eight. Number eight, by the way, going back, is probably the most popular size that's been ever sold by Openel. Uh, it was considered just the perfect size for people's hands. Um, number eight or number seven would be for smaller hands, but for a lot of this lightweight EDC carry, in your pocket with less things, this is really nice. I do agree though, this feels a little bit more comfortable in the hand. If you got any questions, any comments, uh, please uh, leave them below. Uh, if you're new to my channel, feel free to subscribe, like the video, give it a thumbs up.